Well, the hits just keep coming. RippleNet Senior Vice President General Manager talks about central bank digital currencies running on and through RippleNet. Let's just go ahead and roll that beautiful intro and get into this thing. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. All right, welcome back. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley above at the top of the screen and everything that we're talking about here. So let's start with this, a different Ripple executive who reveals he has he's an XRP whale after divulging details on crypto portfolio. I wouldn't say divulged too many details. I mean, he did give some information, but shout out to David Schwartz, who did say that he holds somewhere between one and 10 million XRP. <laughs> So there you have it. Um, now, looking at this, uh, he did go on to say that he recently said he had lost uh, by trading altcoins that suffered extreme drops in value. It was ticks, dice, flash, VZT or VEZT, AMP, SIG, B, kind, and prize, and kudos, and NRN. I'm not familiar with any of those. So shout out to him. Years ago, Schwartz revealed he had sold 40,000 Ethereum at $1 price and sold Bitcoin at $750 and sold XRP at 10 cents. It's just fun to know, right? It's not going to change any of our lives, but it's just fun to know what David's been up to. But here's something you need to know, and it's not exactly fun, but we all need to know it. Be aware out here, as the crypto market is taking off, you're going to see more scammers move into the scene looking to take advantage of all of us out here in this market. Use caution. And I know that I've had people impersonating my account as well in my YouTube channel. Make sure you absolutely look at the addresses and see what the address is. You know, uh, I'm never going to send you anything unless it comes from digital perspectives news at gmail.com. If it didn't come from there, it's not a newsletter. And I'm never going to solicit direct money to from you ever so just know that as well so anything you get from me comes from either my youtube channel or from that email that i just gave you in my newsletter period full stop so be careful out here and there is a great special right now 88 percent off on pure vpn it's not a hundred percent security protection but it is one of the many layers of protection i use for myself when i'm online so make sure you check that out all right so now all Pizza Hut locations except cryptocurrency in Venezuela. Pizza Hut joins Burger King, Intercontinental Hotel, Tracky. I guess that's correct in how I'm saying it, and several other major stores in Venezuela that accept cryptocurrencies. Now, look, it's Venezuela. A lot of you are saying, hey, you know, it's not the U.S. When, when are we getting in here? Look, you know it's coming. You see PayPal, Cash App, Square. You see all of these things rolling this out. So it is well on its way, and it's even further on its way in Venezuela because they have a lot of trouble with currency there and stability of the currency as well as the government at times. So let's keep an eye on that. Now, here is something that's coming to us all. Fidelity Digital Assets will support Bitcoin and Ethereum for retail clients. Now, we all know that Fidelity Investments has been in this space and Fidelity Digital Assets has been in this space for quite some time. However, you know, it's all taking place. This is going to be, imagine huge hoses of water being laid into a giant pool that is being filled right now. This is just in another, an enormous hose of water filling up that pool. There's just no question. And with the brand awareness of Fidelity's name in the investment space, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know. And then we have Guggenheim Fund Files to be able to invest up to half a billion, 500 million in Bitcoin. Guggenheim filed with the SEC to allow its $5 billion macro opportunities fund to gain exposure to Bitcoin by investing 10% of the fund's net assets value in Grayscale's Bitcoin trust. Again, there's approximately $9 trillion or so in the 401k pension market. 
And this is happening everywhere. Fidelity Investments, Guggenheim Fund, it just, you know, Bitcoin's grayscale. This is the kind of this is the kind of attention crypto is getting now. People realize that the traditional stock market is going to have a pay to piper moment. I don't care who's sitting in the seat. That moment's going to come regardless. So I think, you know, investment funds, companies of that nature are absolutely making that pivot to be able to hedge that pain that is going to come. Now, I just had to throw this up here because I just want to throw this. This is not a small thing, ladies and gentlemen. And I have a question for you. First of all, Facebook says they're going to launch Libra in January 2021. It's a month from now. What's it going to run on? Railroad tracks? A kite string? Somebody just going to push it? (laughs) I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, you know, we've heard plenty and plenty of talk about, you know, the XRP ledger. Brad Garlinghouse said himself is being looked at by central banks to issue their digital currencies on. We know that when Facebook first came out with the white paper, what happened? World leaders stood up and said, oh, hell no. Don't believe it. It's still true. That white paper was about a basket of fiat currencies to support a new money called Libra, of which the basket of currencies, the fiat money of the world, would be subject to monetary policy, while this new money, Libra, could just go on and do whatever it wanted to. Oh, no. The world stood up and said, not going to happen. This Libra coin is going to be released. It's going to be a digital dollar. There will be no basket of fiat currencies. Oh, no. This gets interesting. What is it going to run on? Is anyone going to tell me that Libra's network's already plugged into everything? (laughs) Because I'm not buying it. I think what I'm getting at is we're looking at a good opportunity to see Libra possibly launched off of the XRP ledger. I'm not saying it is my speculation, but it certainly, I think, is well put. That speculation is well put, and we'll certainly make the video about what it ends up being whether it's the XRP ledger or not. Now, while that's happening, we're seeing the director of national intelligence urge the SEC to support Bitcoin and crypto companies so it can compete largely and broadly with China and the fact that China is so far ahead down the road here. But we can't overlook the idea that China has 51% control over Bitcoin and Ethereum because that's where the large majority of the miners are. You can't argue that fact because it's not an opinion. It's a fact, just like, you know, sun's hot in August. You know, it's really not up for discussion. That's what that is. So at some point, I think we're going to have to see that element of those assets be dealt with in some regulatory policy type way. We'll we'll keep an eye on that. Now, with that being said, this does show right here where Ratcliffe reportedly wants the SEC to implement a regulatory framework to make it easier for those U.S. companies to operate and compete with China. Now, let's take a break from that and just look at the the price of XRP right now was 61 cents. It's taking a breath right now at 59 cents. Well, it doesn't bother me none because, again, like I told you, Brad Garlinghouse just said it himself. About two weeks ago on Frank Chaparro's podcast, let's listen to this and let's talk about the general manager of RippleNet and what he says about RippleNet and central bank digital currencies. Listen to this first from Brad Garlinghouse. I mean, certainly we do know of central banks looking at the XRP ledger as open source technology to issue stable coins using the XRP ledger. Oh. There you go. He goes on to say that they could be doing it and not contacting us too, but some do contact us and we try to help them with those that do. And that's to the tune that they're actually hiring a senior director at Ripple specifically to be the contact point 
a point of contact between central banks to help them issue central bank digital currencies off of the ledger. I think it's safe to say at this point that Bragg and Garlinghouse is a smart enough man to know to not to say things like this if they don't turn out to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and walk out on what I don't believe is a thin limb and say that central banks are going to start launching digital currencies off of the XRP ledger. I'll make the video if it's wrong. Now, with that being said, we almost get like a doubling down because here comes this article. Shout out to 432 XRP. Can RippleNet bridge local CBDCs efficiently? This executive thinks so. This executive is now the general manager of RippleNet. We're talking about Ashish Birla. Shout out to Ashish Birla. All right. Looking at the article here. Can RippleNet bridge the CBDCs? First, he goes into the line of credit. So let's talk about that for a second. This is a very short article. Stay with me here. This is going to be good. With crypto market rally finally gathering steam over the past few months, many uh, expect likes of Ripple to take a new next step forward. A similar thought process was recently shared by Ashish Birla, now the general manager of RippleNet, after he ap appeared on the latest edition of Lend Academy podcast to explain why Ripple's line of credit product may be poised to capture a new market. While traditional vendors extend lines of credit to construction companies with ease, the same cannot be said when it comes to lending to fintech companies. According to the Ripple exec, the firm can uh, potentially solve this by not only offering cross-border payments, but by also giving them a little bit of capital for two or three days and charging them for it. This is, there is a real need in the market for an all-in-one experience, he said, adding that apart from existing customers, there is a whole other segment around e-commerce that needs the same thing. Goes on to say, I don't think you have the right kind of financial infrastructure to support those kinds of companies. So that's something I'm really looking forward to in terms of innovating and building for the, for in the upcoming year. While Ripple's new product offering is still in its early days, so it still is the strategy to capitalize on the growth of the interest of the CBDCs globally. Speaking about CBDC and China pilot that went live recently, Burla said, I think that everyone else is going to play catch up, to be honest. You don't have so many centralized functions that China does. The interesting thing here is that it has nothing to do with blockchain. Now, he says here also, uh, in the light of centralized solution being offered by China's central bank digital currency, Berla noted, I think RippleNet can actually take these local CBDCs and bridge them to make money move more efficiently. Further, the executive claimed that Ripple has repositioned itself well with the respect to building out RippleNet's decentralized network as it works towards linking domestic central bank digital currencies and making them more efficient. The assumption here is that Ripple intends to promote the use of the XRP uh, asset as a bridge asset between central bank digital currencies with the company even moving to hire the senior director central bank engagements for the sole purpose of executing this strategy as we just discussed a second ago. This is where we're going. Like I said, there's a reason that Ripple's not hiring underwater basket weavers because they don't need any. What they do need, however, is a senior director to help engage the central banks and get them what they need to make it a more smooth, ubiquitous process to get their CBDC launched on the XRP ledger. Otherwise, this isn't a public conversation on a podcast by Brad Garlinghouse. Otherwise, this isn't a backup mention of doubling down and showing the effectiveness and the efficiency that RippleNet could provide to such a system. Otherwise, there's no need to have this conversation at all publicly because if it's not going to happen or it's too much in the wings, it doesn't do anything but put you at risk as a company to project the notion of it to only fail to achieve it. I don't know what else to say, but you take all of this and combine it with the 
the definition and rule change uh, with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau allowing Ripple and XRP to be cited as a solution for cross-border payments for banks and credit unions. You take in the definition proposed amendment change for the FinCEN and the Federal Reserve that the definition of money include virtual currencies and explicitly, uh, uh, by the way, you know, and you take that regulatory motion and those changes in those agencies and combine that with this understanding of what Ripple is absolutely building out on doing. I can't see how we're very far away from something really happening in a huge cataclysmic shift in the digital asset space. And coming along with such a thing would be a gigantic paradigm shift in the history of uh, of digital assets and the financial system uh, in large. Look, that's going to do it for me. This is just getting more exciting by the day, and it's Sunday. <laughs> so I hope everybody's having a great day. Remember to check the links in the description box and the comment section. They are vetted, vetted links. They're trusted companies. I use all those products and services. And by the way, there are some amazing Black Friday specials happening right now, just until the end of the month. It's three months free from Crypto Tax Fixer. It is 88% off from PureVPN. And it's 40% off a of Ledger Nano S. And starting tomorrow... It is buy one, get one free at unstoppable domains because they are unstoppable. All right, guys, do the like and subscribe, share with somebody you know, leave a comment below. I'll catch all of you on the next one.